perfect body's in tonight You don't ever have to hide Love sees, love is not blind Love sees right through to the vision of you The original design he had in mind When he created you, oh Everybody, hallelujah! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We are just listening to a little bit of Amanda Lindsay no, as we prepare no, no, no. to start this broadcast. So just continue Never your worship, continue your praise, oh, hallelujah! Yeah. Just continue to just bring your mind in and begin to just worship the Lord, hallelujah! Glory to God. You are good, you're good. Oh. You are listening to For A More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Hello, hello, hello. Well, praise God. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Well, tonight, hallelujah, amen. Let's just praise God. Praise God. <laughs> amen. So tonight, I have with me our one and only overseer, Pastor Jay Evans. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glad to so, be with you. Amen. So I've been hanging out with you for a little while now. So that has been a blessing for me because I totally enjoy um, hanging out with you. So tonight, I, we've already been in the Word. We've already been <laughs> talking. We were into it last night. You know, so we're just going to let the Holy Spirit do what He want to do tonight. We're going to be talking about at the moment you believed. What... A lot of believers do not understand, Overseer, is that when it comes down to the uh, things of the kingdom, things mm -hmm. of God, right? He operates off of faith. We all know that, right? Uh -huh. We were I, All of us were brought up on understanding that God moves through our faith, right? Mm -hmm. So when we say, at the moment you believed... What I'm try I want to communicate through this message today is that when you make that connection to God, when you hear that word and you make that connection, oh, my Lord. whatever it is, Hallelujah. that particular word is coming to you for whether it's a healing, whether it's a deliverance, whether you need money, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. When you hear that word, whether that word comes in your spirit, a friend is sharing the word, it's a preach word or a prophesied word. When you hear that word, you have the fruits of that word at the moment you believe. At the moment you believe. You at the help. moment you Amen. believe. Yes, See, sometimes you. Christians believe they get it. When they see it. Mm, mm, mm. Oh God just did this. My bill was due. But they called me and told me. They're going to give me an extension. Well when you. Oper when you believed God. That he was going to take care of the bill. That's when the bill was taken care of. <laughs> Not when you got the Ooh, phone my, call. My, my, my. Glory. Hallelujah. That's Glory. Tough more time here now. Glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. And and I want to talk a little bit about some of the experiences oh, we have had because the experiences is what lets you know that it's at the moment that you believed that you that you receive whatever it is that you was looking for or wanting or to desiring or in desperate need of, right? Uh -huh. When you hear the word and you believe the word, that's the moment you have the fruit of the word. So God woke me up at three o'clock. In the morning. It was about 3 06. Ooh, and you know, I don't mind getting up hey, early. Hey, my yeah. I, was, I, was in a, I was in a coma then, wasn't I? Oh, my goodness. I, my favorite time to wake up in the morning is 5. That is my all time favorite time to wake up. Now, if I got to get on the road, I prefer then to get up at 4 so I can get on the road at 5. Now, don't ask me what that's about, but I, that's my all-time favorite time to get up in the morning. But this time, he woke me up at 3. Hmm. And he started talking to me about, at the moment you believe. Hmm. I started writing down all kinds of notes and you know, uh, I think it was Pastor Wanda, she was saying that God had woke her up and she was just writing, writing, writing. Well, you know, once you're up, it's like, man, you might as well stay up. You might as well just, ain't no point in trying to go back and turn around and get back in the bed and do all of that. No, 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 no. You go ahead on and stay up. Mm -hmm. But he began to talk to me about at the moment that you believe. Now, the scriptures that he took me to was... Paul on the road to Damascus. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to those scriptures and I'm going to go ahead on and read um, those scriptures. And then I'm going to share what it is God said. Why are we talking about at the moment that you believe? Because right now, right now, we have got to get to a place where we believe 
God. Oh, yeah. If you are going to see some of the things that have been prophesied, some of the things that not some, I'm using the word some. Let me let me backtrack. No. If you're going to see the things that God has prophesied, if you're going to um see the manifestation of those things, you have to believe. See what happens is we believe it when we see it, mm. but God is trying to get us to believe to see. Amen. Believe to the manifestation. You That means that the whole time you looking for that thing to come to pass because God done spoke to you about it. That means you walking in belief. What is belief? Belief is being fully persuaded oh, yeah. about what it is that's been said to you. So if you believe the prophet's word, then you don't sit back and wait for it to come to pass and then you'll start believing. Oh, no. Yeah. no. Every day you getting up believing. Listen here, I was prophesied to five times. From different people in different states, they all said the same thing. They said, God's sending you to the nations. 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 Right, let me, oh, get, let me get that country lady over here in, in Phoenix City. God is sending you to the nations. <laughs> That's how she talked. But listen here. When did I start believing God was sending me to the <laughs> nations? Do I believe it now? Hey. Or is now a manifestation hey. of God sending me to the nation. All right. Amen. Lord, have mercy. See, y'all think that up. I be just trying to get in some kind of flow concerning the radio. No, I'm telling you the radio was prophesied long before I ever even went on D30 Radio. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, I don't tell folks that. I don't tell them. Because, see, at the time, I ain't understand it. But it was one of those things, Pastor Jacob, where, uh, overseer, where you had to believe. That's even it. though you didn't understand what that meant. What did that mean, you sending me to the nation? Oh, I've heard people say, well, you know, nations could just be people. Nations could just. I know all of that. But if God is telling you I'm sending you to the nation, he could have found an easier way to say it. I'm sending <laughs> you to the people. Amen. Right? But he said to the nations. Because nations encompasses everything that we've been talking about on 4 More Radio. <laughs> this globalness. This mindset. That's what he had been telling telling me the whole time. I'm sending you to the nations. Well, I'm the sending you all over the world. I'm sending you to remote places. Places you never even thought about. Because y'all better understand something. The internet done gone out long before. It's everywhere. Amen. It's everywhere. So, like I was saying, that was prophesied to me. Mm. I don't know. I think it was five times. Yeah, five times. And so, the whole time, you don't understand or know what God is talking about. But if you believe the prophet, then you walk in what yeah, they say. You just simply say what they said. Well, God said he's sending me to the nation. Well, praise God Lord. said he's sending me to the nation. Look, when the Lord spoke to me, I was in Germany, and he spoke to me, and he said this. He said, men, women, and children are going to get saved under your ministry. I expect, even to this day, I expect oh, men, God. women, and children to get saved as a result of the ministry that's in me. So do I wait to see people get saved or do I believe what God has already he said? Always, I already good. said. Yeah. So when he told me that, I believed it. And I just started walking the streets and ministering the gospel and talking to people and they were getting saved. Amen. And left and right. Uh, folks, a man called me from London. And he started trying to sell me something. I flipped the script on him in the Holy Ghost so quick that man was on the phone giving his life to the Lord. So what am I talking about? All of these blessings that you waiting on, have you believed? All right. Have you believed the word of the prophet? Have you believed what was spoken into your spirit? Have you believed? Because let me tell you something. At the moment that you believe, that's when that thing came to pass. At the moment. Lord, have mercy. It was, it was at settling a heaven, wasn't moment, it? yes. But see, I'm going to tell you something. People think they believe God. Oh, oh, you oh. think you believe God. You think. See, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I, I'm about to talk about Paul. Right. I'm about to go into the Word. But I'm going to tell you this right here about Paul, and then, then we'll catch this up. Listen to me. Paul was full of the Word. Mm -hmm. And Paul believed in God. Yeah. Yeshua, uh, 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 Elohim, not, not Yeshua, Elohim. He believed. Mm -hmm. He, I mean, let me say it again. He was full of the word and he believed in God. That's right. That's it. 
but he didn't know Jesus. They didn't know you. He yeah. didn't know Jesus. See, we got a lot of people that they follow the word. They memorize a Ooh. lot of scriptures. They know a lot of scripture. They can spit the scriptures out left and right. I mean, just top to bottom scripture. Don't they don't miss one period, one comma, or oh, nothing. Yeah, yeah. And they believe in God. They can tell you God this and God that and God this and God that. But let me tell you something. They don't believe in Jesus. Mm, mm. They don't believe in Jesus. But the problem is, they don't know they don't believe in Jesus. Oh, Why do they not know it? Because they'll say Jesus. Yeah. They'll say Jesus. But they don't realize. They don't even believe in Jesus. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. We're going to be coming from Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And I'm going to be. What is this Bible here? Oh, I. Uh, look here, I just grabbed King James. That's all right. I'm gonna read it from the King James, but I'll that's a uh, good one. I'll change up a few things to get away from the D's and the Dows and all that. Okay, here we go. Chapter nine. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way. See, this is what we should be saying. I'm of the way. Of the way. I'm of the way. The way. See, right now we say I'm Christians. And we say that word because we cannot get away from it. Mm -hmm. If we start saying I'm of the way or even I am a believer or I'm just a born again. See, we run the risk of losing some people that we might be trying to minister to. Because when you start saying things like I'm of the way, they not used to that. Mm -hmm. So they That's may right. think you in some kind of cult or something like that. <laughs> and like, yeah. Oh, no, thank you. So we got to sell on in and use the word Christian, but I'm going to tell you something, is when you can educate people, take advantage of that, and educate them, and let them know what that word Christian, yes, what sir, it means, the what's the background of that, because really, we are people of the way, but the we're going to go the truth on. And the light. We're going to go on. Whether they were men or women, mm. he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Listen here. This is Paul before Christ. That's right. This is him it's right it's before Christ. Soul. This same man was a Pharisee. Mm. When he breaks down, he said, what did he say? I'm a Pharisee among oh, the Pharisees. Pharisee. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Paul was the real deal. Uh -huh. He was the... the, 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 he was the, the Jewish from the heart. That's, exactly. He was the real deal, right? But here, here, this is how he was, right? He was so dedicated to what he was doing that he didn't have a problem going, snatching up men, snatching up women, and bringing them back bound to Jerusalem. Why? Because he believed that they were wrong. He sensed Sincerely believe that what they was doing was wrong. Mm. And he had appointed himself one that was going to take care of that. Uh -huh. I'll deal with that. Let me go to the high priest. Somebody that cannot even give me the authority to go and arrest people. But I'm going to go to him because he deceived too. And he's going to give me papers. What kind of papers you need to go and commit a crime like that? Oh, my Lord. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. But let's go on. And in... in and, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Why are you persecuting my People, oh, yeah. because what you do to my people, you doing it to uh, me. me. See, me. a lot of times people don't believe that. They don't believe it because they'll do what they want, they'll say what they want, they'll act any kind of way. But they'll see the reason they deceive is because they think, well, I ain't drinking no more, mm -hmm. I ain't smoking no more. I ain't cussing no more. I ain't doing that. But you got such a heavy fist and a heavy hand. And you deal with God's people as if they yours. As if they belong to you. And it's all about satisfying you. Y'all. Oh, you better say something. Hey. You better say something. See, we think persecution is just going up and calling people out of their names and this and that. No, you persecute people when you put them in bondage. Mm. You persecute people when you treat them as if they are not as saved as you are. Oh, Lord, my, have, Lord mercy, have mercy, Jesus. Lord, oh, have mercy, Jesus. But you saved, you saved. I, I'm, and I'm going to get to that. Ooh. I'm going to get to that. 
Lord have mercy. Here we go here. We are on verse uh, verse 4. And it says, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And verse 5 says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Now listen. If you hear a voice Speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Now you know all the voices around you. You know the people that's traveling with you. It was only about three of them I believe. You know their voices. Mm -hmm. But here you are. The smartest among all the people. You know everything. Right? Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden. You hear a voice speaking to you. And this voice is uh, telling you. Asking you. Why are you persecuting me? You gonna either believe that's the Lord, or you gonna think it's the devil. <laughs> Paul thought, "Who are you, Lord?" Lord. He said, "Lord, uh -huh. who are you, Lord?" He knew that that voice was coming was far greater than he was. Oh yes, sir. He understood that what I'm hearing right now. This is past anything about me. We're going to see Paul go down. We're going to see humility in this man from this point on. There's going to be times when he get in his flesh and get in himself. But from who he was before this point All in right. life, we're going to see him operate in humility. So let's go on. And he said, oh my goodness, let me go back. He said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? In verse 6 he says, And the and he trembling and astonished said, Lord. Mm. Let me say this again. Lord, uh. Let me say this again. See, at first I say Lord with a question mark because I ain't sure. Uh -huh. I don't know, uh -huh. Lord. I mean, you know, who, who, who are you, Lord? Who are you? But now he's saying... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, and he trembling and astonished said, now he says, Lord, Lord that's right. what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told, it shall be told thee what thou must, must do. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Now, Pastor Jackie, if you go any further in that, bring it on. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to stop right there because I only want to deal with That's the it. first That's part. That's good. The first part of this deals with at the moment you believe. At the moment you believe, yes. Paul's life was dramatically transformed from this place right here. Uh -huh. He was never, ever the same. Woo! He went on to do awesome and amazing things. But it started with the moment he believed. Yes, yeah. Why did I say that? Because, see, there are a lot of people in this world. They done had accidents. They done had almost dying situations. Some of them died and was brought back to life. Some of them lost children. Some of them, you know, they had horrendous things happen to them. Even in the midst of all of that stuff happening, they still could not believe. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's look at I, I'm gonna give y'all somebody everybody know. Let's look at Annie Mae. Better known as Tina Turner. <laughs> they made a movie about her. She was getting a snot beat out of her left and right. And still, she went on to believe in Buddha. And that's right. Yeah. See, we think that every time somebody go through something horrific or horrendous, that it brings them to the Lord. But it don't. Because some of them refuse to believe. Why? Because they still want to stay in charge of their life. They don't want to surrender to God. Because see, in, when you're in the midst of that light or that faith shining in your heart, you have to make a decision on the spot. And let me tell you on the spot, Paul believed because he yes, said sir. this right here. He said, Lord, 
what will thou have me to do? At that moment, he surrendered himself. Now, this man right here, uh, I think it was you, Pastor Jack, and we were talking one time, and you were talking about the, 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 the level of education that this man had. Paul was by no means a dumb man. Oh, no. He was, uh, a, he was the cream ladies. of the crop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, had the, he had the very best teaching. Oh, and yeah. see, sometimes when you get so much education and excelled above, and excelled above everybody. Thank yeah. you for that, Pastor Jack. See, sometimes when you, um, sometimes when you, um, uh oh. <laughs> Sometimes when you have so much education, you start thinking that you so much. You start thinking that you got so much going on. You you start thinking that you're the one. Well, this is a glimpse of how Paul was. This is why he was so arrogant that he believed that he could go to the high priest and request a letter to go and kill people. Request a letter to go and uh, put them in bondage, put them in chains. He That's how arrogant he was. But in the midst of him coming in contact with the Lord at the moment that he did. Y'all better stay there because I'm going somewhere. He surrendered. He surrendered. It was at the moment that he believed. So the Lord showed me three things. He showed me three things. And we're going to walk through those three things right there. Now I encourage you go back, read the scriptures. Read all of the scriptures. Read every last one of the scriptures in Acts uh, 9 because you're going to get more revelation. But it's just a few things we're going to deal with right here. First of all, if the first thing, the first thing um, we want to do, I'm sorry, y'all. We just had a little bit of an interruption just then, but uh, hopefully that's over with. That's done. It won't happen no more. So here we go. Praise the Lord. The first thing we're going to deal with is concerning at the moment you believe. That's right. The, the first moment was the acknowledgement of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to tell you guys something that you may not realize. Not everybody that's in church that's quoting scriptures is just showing up faithfully. Not everybody knows Jesus Christ. They have not had an experience with him to the point where they know that they know that they know that they know that Jesus is real. That's right. There are yeah. many people that believe God is is real Ooh, but you're going. not gonna be challenged on god you're gonna be challenged on jesus christ yeshua hamashiach there are those who they follow faithfully the man or woman of god but they do not believe or are not fully persuaded that jesus christ is the son of god uh -huh. let me tell you something one of my favorite scriptures is this one right here when Jesus was talking to Peter and he said, whom do men say that I am? And now all of them went through the list of who Jesus, oh, who, they, you know, who people said that Jesus was. But when he got, Peter stood up when he said, well, whom do you guys, who do you say? I'm, this is uh, um, paraphrasing. He said, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Listen here. Ooh, my if Lord. you think everybody has gotten that revelation no, sir, that yeah. Jesus is the Son of God, that he is the Messiah, you are sadly mistaken. Oh, yes. You are sadly mistaken. Yes. And let me tell you something. That's good this word. is one of th those things where you have Ooh. to go back to the Lord and you have to say, God, on the road to Damascus, you sat, shine that light bright into Paul's life. He heard your voice. After that, he knew, he knew, he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that you was real. You told Peter, you said this revelation that you have, it didn't come by man. This thing came by my father. Ooh, See, there's revelation. a lot of people that's walking around operating off of a revelation they got from man, but they have no revelation for themselves that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Ooh. He is the Whoa. Messiah. Thank he you, is the Word of God. He will come. He will reveal himself to you. That is a scripture that talks about you being in him, being in the Father. He said he'll manifest his self to you. Some of you guys have
have not had a manifestation of Jesus. Oh. You don't had a manifestation of everything else, but you have not had a manifestation of Jesus. Lord, have oh, my God. don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. See, I didn't have to be on the road to Damascus. I was standing in a little um, hot dog shop called Frank Frank's when I was preparing some food and all of a sudden the Lord walked in. I was trying to show Pastor Jackie how he walked in. It was as if it was just like a wind and it was like whoosh. he came in and my response to him because I knew exactly who he was is that I just kind of was like I didn't say this but trying to be descriptive it was as if I just looked and I said hey like what are you doing here uh, why, why are you here see he said he'll manifest, manifest himself if you really believe at the moment you believe you can count on him manifesting himself Ooh, to you see uh, the reason why some people have not had a manifestation is because you really don't believe yeah. and that's because I want to tell you to go back and say, Father, I believe, I believe. but help my unbelief. <laughs> help my unbelief. Because somewhere along the way, you get confused with Jesus being Jew. You get confused with Jesus being human. You get confused with, with all this stuff about Jesus. Now I'm about to drop a bomb on drop you. For those of you that don't know, listen here. The exact same relationship. That the disciples had with Jesus in the in the natural is the exact same relationship we have with him in the spirit. Oh yeah. He kept telling his disciples, he said, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. Who was the Father in him? It was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. He was there localized inside yeah. of Jesus. Oh yeah. Jesus could have given you an authority to go do this and go do that and go do this. But he told you, look here, don't worry about when I leave. Because, see, I'm going to send another one back. I'm going to send just another like comforter <laughs> just like me back. But listen, y'all don't understand what happened. See, when he went away, he came back. He only came back without the body. It was him. He said that... That I was coming to abode to, to abide in you, the three of us. We're coming to abide in you. I want you to think for a minute. Well, hold on, wait a minute. Who came inside of me? We say the Holy Ghost. Well, who is that? Who, who is the he? Whole Godhead bodily. It's the whole Godhead bodily. What does that mean? That's God in the spirit. That is the spirit of Jesus. That Jesus told the disciples, he said, look here. I'm not going to speak about myself. What did he say the Holy Spirit going to do? He's not going to speak about himself. Yeah. What? Look here, y'all. Look oh. here. Look here. Look here. Look here. If you do not know. If you do not know. Or shall I say, have not had. Your own personal experience with Jesus where he manifested himself to you. Then you got to go back and you got to check your belief system. You got to check your, do you, are you really loving him? Oh my. He said that if you uh, abide in me and my words abide in you. If you keep my commandments, if you do yes, what you yes, hear yes, me you love tell you to do, all of this is going to cause you to receive a manifestation of him to the point where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is real. He is Ooh. the son of God. Hallelujah. See, I'm going to tell you what a revelation of man look like. This is what a revelation of man looks like. Somebody, Jesus, he would tell them. He said, look here, don't go down there and tell them this. Don't, don't go down there and tell them what happened up here on the Mount of Transfiguration. Don't tell them that. There's reasons why he told them. Why? They ain't going to believe you. Because they can't receive what just happened in your life. Another thing is because I don't want them to get an understanding of who I am. I want them to give a revelation Woo! of who I am. If you go down there and you tell them, this is the Messiah, this is the Messiah, this is the Messiah. And they themselves don't get that, that revelation. Themselves. And all they're yeah. going off of is what you, you said. said. But let me tell you something. Ooh, yes, let me tell you something. God still going to have mercy on you because you're going off of what somebody else said. But at the same time, that's what there's going to come a 
time when you got to start believing for yourself. What am I talking about? Let's go back over here to the uh, woman at the well. At the well. She the went way. back. She she was in the presence of the Lord, and she took that presence back to Samaria. When she got in the presence of those people, those men, she started talking about the Messiah. They believed. Mm -hmm. They believed, and they went to the well where he was. You hear what I'm yeah. saying? But see, once they got there, and they got in his presence themselves, and they talked to him, and they heard the word, and it came alive on the inside. They went back, and they told the woman, all right, look here, we did believe because of what you said. But see, now we don't just believe because of what you said. We believe because we saw him ourselves. Yes, we yeah, met him ourselves. Y'all yeah. better hear what I'm saying. See, it's some of you that believe because of what somebody else said. Mm, 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 mm. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Because it brought you to God. But you got to move, move It over. brought you to Jesus. But see, now you got to get a revelation yourself. The word has got to come alive. Woo! You know, I used to, let me tell you something. I used to kick myself in the butt all the time because I felt like I didn't know this and I didn't know that and, and this and that and this and that. And I would just have these moments of insecurities and all of that stuff. But you know something? This is so weird. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I knew the Lord. Uh -huh. I knew. I when I say the Lord, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm talking I'm talking about the one that walked with the disciples. I'm talking about the one that was birthed through Mary. I'm talking about the one that hung on the cross. See, I didn't know him by mental assent. I didn't know him just by agreeing with what I heard and saying yes to what I heard. But I know him because I had an encounter. Oh. I had an encounter. See, I saw the presence of the Lord. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you, I saw the presence of the Lord. When I was getting ready to get baptized, I was standing in the back of the church. This was in Germany. I don't know what part of Germany it was in. But I was standing in the back. And the man that was up at the mic, he was talking. He was talking. And then before he said this, this is what I saw. I saw, I saw the presence of the Lord. Not of this mess that you see on TV. That's right. No, Not Hollywood of that mess. Jesus with the blue eyes and the blonde hair and all of that mess like that. None of that. Uh -huh. but I saw the presence of the Lord. When I saw him, he was holding a baby. Mm -hmm. Right after I saw the vision of the Lord, the man up front started preaching, started sharing with the congregation that somebody's baby just died. Woo! Baby just died. I saw the baby in the arms of the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, I saw, See, I saw my whole you want to have those kind of encounters where you really, really, really see God in addition to the word. Let me tell you, let me, let's go back to the word because it, the word is him. Uh-huh. The word is him. So until you believe the word, see, we like the master preaching. We like the master teaching. And we'll teach on any subject and teach on this and teach on that and have lived none of it. But because we are articulate enough to preach the word, we're going to get up and do it. But you ain't had no real revelation, no real understanding, no real encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm painting you a picture of Paul. I'm telling you this man can argue the word with anybody. Yes, yeah. he, could, he could bring that Torah front to back. Stephen could too. Yeah. Stephen could too. But Paul could do that. But even in him being able to do that, he didn't know Jesus. Didn't know the Lord. He didn't know the very one that they was waiting on. He was waiting on the Messiah uh -huh. and didn't even know didn't him. Even the people that were serving him, Paul looked down his nose. He thought that those, whatever he thought that they were, they was worthy of death in his eyes. Uh -huh. Why? Because he didn't know the Messiah. That's why you can have a preacher that'll preach hard, talk down to you, make you feel like you ain't nothing. Why? Because he ain't got no revelation no, of Jesus. No, my Lord, no love in him. He ain't got no. You can't have a revelation of Jesus and treat people wrong. Mm, no. You can't have a Woo! revelation of Jesus. My, my, my. No, because the moment you realize that you are doing something contrary to the word, and it's like that. Okay, let me put Lori on blast. Let me put Lori on blast. I don't think Tamika will mind if she do. Uh, we'll talk about it. But look here. Uh, I, 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 I saw something one day. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And I didn't like it because it didn't fit my mold. It didn't fit my norm. Right? 
But even in that, that could be true and it could be, it can stand. You can have ground to stand on. But even in that, you still got to be compassionate. You still got to be loving. You still got to be kind. You can't just talk to people any kind of way oh, yeah. and treat them any kind of way. You get smart with them. You throw off on them. And you think it's okay to do that. Why? Because you think you're such a much. Because you think you have a ride. You think you're better than everybody. You think you're on a level greater than everybody. Well, let me bring you down because you might not know Jesus. Right. You might not know Jesus. See, knowing the word, having memorized the scriptures, do not make you know Jesus. I know that's for a fact. It does not make yeah. you know Jesus. You have got to allow him to bring that word alive. Woo! Look here, Pastor uh, Overseer. I told you, I saw the words come off the page. Mm, that's it. That's how he that's let a, me know. A living word. This is not just a book that you're reading, my daughter. <laughs> This is me. Ooh, when you read God. this and you get this on the inside of you, you have me on the inside of you so that you can turn around and say, I am in him and he is in me. See, a lot of people can't say that. They can't say that because why? They only have head knowledge. You got all this head knowledge. You got head knowledge, head knowledge, head knowledge, but you have Ooh. no real Ooh, manifestation Ooh. given to oh, you. Oh, give it no to us, Lord. Give it to us, Lord. Revelation given to you Hallelujah. by the Lord. So let me tell you something. That's why God gave me Paul. Because, see, we love to look up to Paul. We love, but see, Paul had to go down. So the first thing I said is you have to have an acknowledgement of Jesus, right? When Paul said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He got the revelation. My God, mm -hmm. hallelujah, this is the Messiah. <laughs> this is the Messiah. How do we know that he knew it was the Messiah? What did he preach on? Yeah. After that, he talked about Jesus. Yeah, that Jesus, testimony, that Jesus. testimony. He talked about Jesus. He talked about Jesus. Yeah. He had to deal with a few issues here and there, but he talked about That's Jesus. That's how you know he knew Jesus was the Messiah. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Praise but there was another thing that happened. That was another thing. See, before the blindness, Paul could only see himself. Mm, mm, mm. He could only see the people of the way. He can only see the ladder. He can only see himself rounding them up. Yes, sir, the he can only the see himself dealing with them on behalf of God. <laughs> he can only see that. But see, when he became blind, he had to enter into another world. Mm, mm, mm. See, on this side, you walked by what you saw. But on the after the blindness, you walked not by what you saw. You walk by faith. Mm. So in the three days of him being blind, the transformation was taking place. Oh, yeah. The transformation. How do I know the transformation was taking place? I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. Mm. Paul was full of the word. He knew the Torah. Oh. He knew that the Torah. Torah came alive in him. So he was at a place where he couldn't go nowhere and he couldn't do anything because mm. he had to be led about. Mm. But in the recesses of him being quiet and not eating and not drinking, all that word started coming alive I, I saw, again, start the pointing the Messiah. to the mm. Messiah. And all of a sudden, Christ started coming alive on the Woo! inside of him. Why do y'all think that Paul is the one that wrote so many books? Why do you think he was the one that understood the, the way of salvation the way that he did? Because the word was already in him. Mm -hmm. It just needed to come alive. It came alive when that light shined in on him. Because that light was Ooh, the faith flashing. that Paul needed to believe. And at the moment what you say? My, that my, he my, believed, my, 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 his life oh, was transformed. Formed. It was changed. And I'm going to tell you this right here. See, you might have some kind of sickness or illness or something going on in your life. And you feel like you believe God. You feel like you believe God. But you keep going back. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. But see, no faith is birthed in that. Mm -hmm. No faith. But at there is a moment mm -hmm. when the word is going to come to you and everything in you is going to say, this is God speaking this to me. Is this is God talking to me. This is it. And you're going to believe at that moment. 
that you believe, that's when you receive your healing. Oh, yes. Uh, do I know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you something. Yeah, go home. Let me tell you something. I had what you call a frozen shoulder. I couldn't lift this thing up. It was so painful, I didn't know what to do. And when I tell you it was painful, it was painful. To the point where I felt like I was losing my mind. I went to the prayer room, and I started challenging God. I was like, hold up, I got children. And if they was in this kind of pain right here, I would help them. I would do something. I, Pastor Jack, uh, obviously I can't tell you what happened in that moment. Mm -hmm. But it was a moment of humility. It was a moment where... In spite of the pain, I knew mm -hmm. you got me. Yeah. You got me. There's another time I was in so much pain. So much pain. And I remember um, all this preacher, they out there in Texas. They call them the faith teachers. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. Gloria, his wife is oh, Gloria. Oh, Kenneth Copeland. Copeland. Yes, that lady was on TV. I, I don't even know. watch her. I didn't watch her or Mel and Hickey. But she was on TV and she started talking about, you know, even in the midst of your pain, you you are healed. You are healed. God is healed. I heard that word no, and I God. knew. That Look here. That word, I am Leave healed. That. I am healed. Ask me if the pain went away. No, it did not. Mm. But I had to believe, and it was at the moment that I believed, mm -hmm. that's when I got the healing. Oh. That's when I got the healing. Mm. See, oftentimes we want to wait. We want to wait until we wake up and, oh, there's no pain. <laughs> there's no pain. Oh, oh my God, I've been healed. No, you was healed <laughs> at the moment you believed. That's Amen. why you want to believe God. <laughs> well, how do I know yeah, if I'll make possible. <laughs> how do I know if I'm not believing? Because you ain't standing on the word. Amen. You ain't heard nothing. You ain't heard nothing. That's why you keep going back and praying the same prayer over and over. At some point that prayer should change. It should go from uh, requesting to declaring. Oh. It should go from begging to declaring, decreeing the word. That's mm -hmm. what should happen. Let's go to the next one. We don't have that much time. The next one is humility. All of this took place right here in those scriptures that I read. From uh, chapter uh, 9, a book of, the book of Acts, from 1 down to uh, verse 6. But go back and read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. The moment of humility. Mm -hmm. At the moment you become humble. Before the Lord, you have now again set yourself up oh, my for Lord, the manifestation. You. See, God can't show Himself to you mm -mm. in pride. In pride, I can't do he it. He can't show Himself to you when you think that you all this and a bag of chips. He can't show Himself to you. That's why you can hear other people preaching, and you can be like, man. Man, I, I don't get no revelations like that. I, I don't think like that. I'm going to tell, put me on blast. I was sitting in a service one time, and uh, Pastor Wanda knows this lady. Her name is, um, uh, we call her Mother Burden. And she was talking about the Holy Spirit. And she was going on and on and on about the Holy Spirit. I'm sitting there listening to her, and I realized, I I don't have no relationship like that. I don't I don't know him like that. All this stuff she's saying, all these things he's telling her to do, all the fruit she's seeing, the manifestation. I was like, hold up. I stood up in front of everybody. I raised my hand and I told her in front of everybody, I said, I do not know him like that. I mean, I'm wanting to know, how do you get to know God that personally? How do you get to know God to where y'all can literally have conversations and talk? Ask me if I know him like that now. Oh. Oh, yeah. You better say something. Do you know him like that now? I know him like that now. <laughs> Listen, the same Jesus that the disciples walked with is the exact same Jesus that we have a relationship with right now. Yes. It's the exact same Jesus. Amen. We are in him. He is in us. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. How did he make that come to pass? Because he came back. <laughs> Amen. And Amen. we call him the Holy Spirit. Amen. We call him the, Holy, the same Spirit. Story. But who 
Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And why don't he talk about himself? Because he's Jesus. <laughs> it's the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. He told us. He don't talk about himself. He points us to the Father. Uh -huh. When the disciples ask us, teach us how to pray. He told them, our Father, which art in heaven. He pointed them to the Father. Amen. The Holy Spirit points us to Jesus of the Bible, but the Spirit points, but Jesus points us to the Father. Amen. Are they three? Is it two? No. It's one. One. He O Israel, that Lord that God is one. Humility. Let me talk to you about humility real quick. Paul's humility came through his blindness. Blindness is about humility. See, you can't run things when you can't see. You can't run things. I'm going to say that again. Uh -oh. You can't run things when you can't see. See, I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. See, there are preachers. They don't have to seek God for no word to preach to the congregation. Why? Because they know enough word to where they can put a message together on the fly. Mm -hmm. And they don't even think about it. So they'll go ahead on. And run things. But that's because they can see. But when you can't see, let me tell you what I mean by that. When you look out at that congregation mm -hmm. and you don't know who's in that congregation, you don't know what's going on with oh, them. Yeah. You don't know what's hurting them. You don't know who's out there about to commit suicide. You don't know all of this. Why? Because you can't see. But by faith, you receive a word from the Lord. Mm. And you deliver that word by faith. Then, after the word is delivered, guess what happens? Now you can see. When you pull them up to the altar. When you start talking to them. When you start praying for them. Now you understand the word that God gave you. This is why every time you go to a new dimension... Some people say level, a new level in God. We can't see. See, when, when I came from Fort Benning to my own business, I, I, I spent so much time praying because I couldn't see. How am I going to be able to do this? <laughs> how am I going to, how is this going to happen? God, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't see. see but when you see, you can do things in your own strength. That's, that's, right. that's what happens to us sometimes. We can see so well and we know so much that we depend on the Holy Spirit less. Oh, what you saying? Nah, I'm a, that's a good word. Unless you see the Although you had mastered that last level or, or that last dimension on the dimension you're on now, you can't see. And he said, the just shall live by faith. You will walk by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. See, Paul had mastered where he was. He knew the Torah. He knew, he believed. He knew all of the stuff that came with being a Pharisee. Oh, yes. He knew all of that. Oh, I'm telling you. But see, this new dimension that took place on the road. He had to have some revelation. He it? had to have some revelation. So oh, yeah. You got to, you got to help me, Lord. Lord. Now I don't know what to do. What did the Lord say? He said, there's going to be something. He said, you arise. Because I'm sending to you to somebody that's going to tell you what to do. So on your new dimension, in the new dimension, there's somebody already there waiting on you. They already got the word for that level. They already have the anointing for that level. They already have the revelation and the understanding for that dimension that you're coming to. Mm -hmm. And see, so you come in blind, but then you receive your sight once you are operating yeah. In humility. A lot of times people don't go to that dimension that they want to go to. It's there for them, but they can't go because pride gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Pride keeps them from it. And if you humble yourself before the Lord, oh, then Lord. you can see those things mm -hmm. that you want to see. You can hear him speak to you the way you want to speak. But you've got to get pride out of your life. You have got to get it yeah, out of your life. It. You've got to get pride out of your life. Mm. Oh, my. That was that was uh, the 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 blindness. Let's go on. I want to talk just a little bit more about that. When it says that Paul was blinded by this light, 
And as I was meditating on it, as I was thinking about, you know, faith was birthed <laughs> inside of him yeah. as a result of that mm -hmm. life, that light. He began to walk by faith after that, even though he had some moments where he reverted, reverted back to his own strength and his flesh. But for really the rest of his life, for the most part, Paul walked by faith. Yeah. Now, all of us, all of us have moments where uh, we yeah. revert back oh, yeah. to our own strength or to our flesh. We all do that. But I believe if the Lord said, if he looked at us and he, just, and he spoke about our lives, he would say, oh, I see you walking in faith. I see you walking in faith. I don't see you down. I don't see you in your flesh. I don't see you. I see you walking by faith. So that means that when you, when you do go down, get up. Yes. Get back in faith yeah. and keep walking because the Father doesn't see us like that. He sees us in Jesus. And in Jesus, there's nothing but faith. Faith. Oh, yeah, Nothing yeah. but faith. That's why you want to be hid in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You want to be hid in Christ. Well, that faith welled up on the inside of him. And now the truth, no, those two worlds that he was caught between, when he fully was over in this new life with the Messiah. <laughs> Lord, that that mm. old life, the Torah, following the rules and the regulations and doing it, that was over. That was over. It was he over. Count, he counted it as dumb, didn't My he? God, All my the education God. counted dumb. He counted it as dumb. Yeah. That was over. It was, it was over. He it even in Acts... Didn't matter no more. In, in Acts uh, 15, he started talking about, you know, I, I think about this. I think about this. Paul was arguing with some of the uh, those that were Jews. He was arguing with yeah. them mm -hmm. about what the Gentiles were supposed to do, what was expected out of them. And he was telling them what the word says. He was letting them know, no, 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 this is over. This is over. These people have been engrafted in. They are already in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. They are already his. Mm -hmm. But see, you're trying to get them to go and start doing works. Why do they need to do works when the Lord has already saved them? That's done. That's mm -hmm. over. But th that's not our message right now. But that just shows you. Paul knew that word. Yeah. But here's another instance of him having to humble himself. Because he had to go to Peter. That's right. And, and James. James. He mm -hmm. had to go to the, the pillars. He had to go to those that were perceived in a higher status than himself. Woo, even though he was an apostle. That's but right. he had to go to them to get clarification for them to declare what the, the Gentiles had to do. The requirement is right. Listen here. That was humility. It took humility. Why? Because when you go back to the natural, Paul was higher than them. <laughs> These were fishermen. They was unlearned. They was unlearned. And educated, but Paul was educated in the best place. When he sat on the Gamaliel, how do you say his name? Yeah. Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my God! But he had to humble himself. So when we start talking about humility, y'all need to really, really get this. If you want to see God, you want to see the things of God, you want to see more manifestations in your life, you want to see this. You got to humble yourself. Uh. Wait you have to humble yourself. Paul is no different than any of us. He had to humble himself. Pastor Jacob, we ain't going to get to all of these. Well, We're going to yeah. go ahead on and move on. Well, praise the Lord. After this, so first there was an acknowledgement of the Lord Jesus. In the midst of him manifesting, Jesus manifesting himself. Yeah. Who are you? I'm <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the one you persecuting, right? Oh, my God. Then... That was the humility. Man. That was the humility. <laughs> and now there are the instructions. Why did the humility come before the instructions? Because some people don't want you to tell them nothing. They don't want you to tell them anything at all. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear what you have to say. Because why? Because they think that they more than you are. They think that they're greater than you are. They think that they're smarter than you uh -huh. are. They think that they know more. I've experienced more. I've seen more. I've done more. So they don't want to hear no instructions from anybody. Mm. But if you cut that part out, 
You just cut off the manifestation of you doing these great things that you're yeah, going to yeah, do. Yeah. Because you have to have the instructions from the person that God appointed to speak into your life. Amen. You got to have them instructions. So when a man or woman of God that he has appointed to come and speak to you. And they speak into your heart and speak into your, speak into your, not your heart, your, speak into your spirit. And they start giving you instructions on what it is you need to do to go from this place to that place. You better receive those instructions. Let me tell you something real quick. Let me tell you something. Two women came to the altar. Two women came to the altar. Mm. I ministered to the first woman at the altar. Oh, this woman was her. so she was so open to receive everything oh, oh, that the yeah, Lord she, said. Oh, she was ready. She mm. was like a sponge. She oh, was soaking yeah. up every oh, single man, she was ready. word. She was ready. Every single thing that she heard. Her eyes was open. Her mouth was open. You could see her. She was receiving it. She wanted it. She knew that her life was at a place where I'm just not beginning this thing with the Lord. But see, I was appointed to speak to her at that time. Give her some wisdom. Give her some instruction. She wanted all the instructions. Instructions. She wanted every she bit hungry. of it. She was hungry. Yeah, she was hungry. Then another lady at the altar couldn't receive nothing. She didn't want to receive anything. Mm, she said she didn't have no joy. She didn't have no peace. She didn't have no, she didn't have nothing. She was, she got sickness in her body. She was um, just a whole bunch of stuff. But she didn't want to receive anything. Anything. It's as if she wanted to stay where she was. Up. So mm -hmm. let me go back. So the woman at the altar that was receiving it all, the instructions, at the moment she believed, That's everything a became hers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, we got a lot of people that if I can't feel it, if I go to the altar and you pray and I can't feel nothing, then I can't receive nothing. Hold on. The question is, even if it's the word, even if it's the word, you cannot receive it because you can't feel anything. No, I'm going to tell you what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying you can't feel nothing because you don't believe. Yeah, yeah. He used a donkey. So you can't get hung up on whether or not the man or the woman of God is speaking the word of God. Do you hear the word of God? Mm -hmm. If you hear the word of God, you saying you can't receive it because you don't feel nothing? No, I the feeling. You don't feel anything. You get up and you go to the altar. Whoever comes and starts to praying for you or whatever, you you did a faith walk to the altar. Yeah, that's right. So get then up. in your hurt, faith walk, get a, get a shot you have on. to trust okay. that whoever God allows to come over and minister to you, that's who has the instructions for you. But see, we get caught up in the package. We get caught up in the package. We get caught up in how they look. We get caught up in how they sound. But are they giving you the word? That's it. Praise Are they giving you the word? So what happens is, because you can't feel nothing, because you can't see God doing it, because you don't understand it, then you don't want it. Mm. I can't. I, no, I don't have no joy. Mm, yeah, you can go ahead and pray for me. Mm -hmm. You can pray for me. You can pray for me. That's just it. Yeah, no. That's just, yeah. So who do you think walked away with a change in their life, oh, even yeah. though they didn't get anything right there on the spot? That first lady came no, up. No, here. no, no, no. I'm saying the person that received and was open, no matter what it was, they received they, it on the spot. That's right. Even if she the got deliverance it. didn't come for six more months, as far as them being out of it, they was already that's delivered it. at the altar. That's you it. was already delivered. Oh yeah. Already delivered. You may have to walk a few things out. <laughs> so how about this? If you saved and you are in this chat room right now, put up hashtag saved. Why am I telling you that? Because I'm about to tell you something. You got your salvation when you went to the altar or went on your knees or in your car or whatever. And you asked the Lord to save you, come into your heart, deliver you. Whatever your prayer was, whatever it was, at the moment that you believed, that's when you became a born again believer. Now, even in that, thank you, Dr. Johnson. Even in that, Dr. Johnson just put up hashtag save. Apostle Samantha Brown put up hashtag save. Let me tell you what that means. That means that you are believing by faith that when your life is over, 
you're going to be with Jesus. That's what say means. Yes, you. It, uh, the word salvation itself means uh, healing, deliverance, protection from destruction. It means all of those things. But ultimately, what it means is that you are going to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can't see Jesus right now. You can't see him right now. You can't see heaven right now. But you believe that when your life is over, you're going to be with Jesus. Is that a fact? Yeah. Yes, it is. I need to put up hashtag save myself. <laughs> I need to put that in myself. Because, see, we're walking this thing out with the Lord. We're walking this thing out with the Lord. and But it's an ongoing process. So some of you guys have already received healing. But just stay in the process. Keep walking. Keep walking. And it's a point in time. It's going to show up and that thing going to be behind you. But in the meantime, between time, God going to use every bit of what you're going through for ministry. He going to use every bit of it for you to help other people come out. Yes. Hashtag saved. Hashtag saved. I tell you what. I'm going to let you guys rest for a minute. I'm going to play this song. It's called The Moment You Believe. The Moment, the moment You Believe. I want y'all to listen to this song. Enjoy this song. Or go get you some coffee. Or go to the bathroom. Whatever you need to do. But I'm going to play this song. And then I'll be back. When we come back, it's going to be time for us to pray. Because we're going to get up out of here. So hold tight. Keep it locked. Don't go nowhere. Listen to this song. The Moment You Believe. And we will be back. My brothers and my sisters, the moment I believed that Jesus died for me is the moment that I was transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. The moment I believed I was seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. The moment I believed I was blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly. The moment I believed. From God astray till on Christ I first believed. In sin I found no peace again. I long to be revealed. I suffered on, endured the pain till on
You are listening to For Amor Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Amen. Thank you guys for keeping it locked. To those of you that are maybe tuned in a little bit late, the title of this uh, podcast today, radio podcast today, is At the Moment That You Believed. So I want to tell you this. I know you want your life to change. I know that you want to see better. I know that you want peace in your mind. I know that you want to be free from pain. I know. I know because I've been there. But I want to tell you at the moment that you believe, that's when you possess every single thing plus some that I just mentioned. That I just mentioned. You will receive it at the moment that you believe. You have to make up in your mind. You have to tell yourself. Look I may not know a lot. But I believe that Jesus is real. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he rose again. I believe that he's coming back. You have to tell yourself, I believe. Because see, God has already given you a measure of faith. He's already given you what you need to believe. But you have to move in it yourself. You have to declare, I believe. You tell yourself. Now, your feelings may start coming up. I don't really believe that. I can't see that. How is it that if Jesus was this and if God is that, has it so much stuff going on in the world is bad and uh, see I just can't believe that. See, but that's a trick of the devil. That all of that is a trick of the devil to get you to the point where you won't believe. Yeah. But if you believe, you will start seeing the hand of God in the midst of all of these things that we call horrible. All these things that we call disastrous. Yes, all of that is true. But I also want to tell you, it's appointed unto man wants to die. Every man is going to get, die. Mm -hmm. God didn't tell us how we're going to die, but he told us everybody is going to die. But I'm telling you now, there are some that are going to die only in the body, but they're going to live with God. They're going to live with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be in the presence of God where there will be no more hurting. There will be no more pain. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more disease. There will be no more financial lack. There will be no more having to get blood transfusions. There will be no more of this stuff. How is it but you have to believe. You have to throw off everything that comes to your mind that tells you no. And you have to say, you know what? I believe. I and if you're struggling, then you say, Father, you say, God, help thou my un help my unbelief. Help me in the areas where I'm really not believing you. And if you do that, you can have a personal one on one relationship with God. Every day he's there with you. Now, in the beginning, he'll let you sense him and feel him and hear him clearly. And he'll do that for a little while because you're a babe and you're learning how to walk. But after a while, you start learning the word. You start knowing what to do. And you don't need him to be there um, just, just every day telling you, come on, go, go, go. Now you know to go. And now you're walking with him in a different way now. He's still there, but you're walking with him in a different way. Now you're like Paul. You can say some stuff now because you know, you know the, 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 the spirit of God. So you can say some things. But let me tell you, Dr. Johnson, you said this radio station, we have to, uh, to, to be global, we have to go after those that are lost. You are exactly right. We got to stop preaching to the choir. We got to stop preaching to one another in chat. But we have got to go out and send a word that when they hear that word, listen here, they may not even fully understand English that well. But when the anointing is on the word and that word starts piercing and penetrating through to the spirit, hallelujah, some people going to fall to their knees and just begin to worship God. And it's at the moment that they believe the Lord will come in and fill them with his spirit. Even though they didn't fully understand everything they heard. So yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, prophetess, 
uh, uh, DACA. She said sometimes you got to learn the heart of these other people in these other countries. You got to get to know what's going on. Start praying for people. That right there will help you open you up to being able to want to minister to people in other places. My God, my God, my God. So yes, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot to do and we're doing it. We are doing it. We're not doing it in our own strength. We're not doing it in our own power. But we're doing it in the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something. I don't want nobody trying to be like anybody else. I want you to be yourself in the Holy Ghost. Not in your flesh. But in the Spirit. Be the way that the Lord has made you. And go forth. And if anybody got a, 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 a problem. With how another person is. Then that says you're not in the right spirit. You're not in the right spirit. Because all of us are different. I'm called to a lot of different people. A lot of the people that I minister to. Lord have mercy. They say wow. You remind me of my grandmother. Now if you thinking you all that. You the, you 50 and you the new 30 and all that. You don't want nobody calling you no grandma. Why I got to remind you of a grandma. Why I can't remind you of your 28 year old aunt. You know what. I love it when they say you remind me of the grandmother. Because I'm believing when they say that. That grandmother has wisdom. That grandmother, that grandmother was speaking words of life to them. That grandmother was giving them instructions and telling them how to live. And, 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 and have an acceptable uh, life. Because you know what? Even in this world, we can't just live any way we want to. We still have to obey the laws. We still have to, uh, you know, um, give honor where honor is due. We still have to do that. We still have to do that. So praise God. Hallelujah. We're coming up on a close. Again, the scriptures that we came from is Acts 9. We also had uh, additional scriptures, but I guess the Lord, and that's one thing about him. You need to just follow him. You need to just follow him. So when scripture starts coming up in you guys, that is wonderful. That is absolutely a blessing. I love the tag team preaching. But you know what? When those scriptures come up in you, that's for you. It's for you. It's for you first. So whatever God has spoke to you, whatever scriptures came up in you, that's for you to meditate on those. That's for you to take those to another level in your life. Hallelujah. And if somebody is reading that and those scriptures stick out to them, amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for the word because there's nothing like the written word of God and the, 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 uh, logos, it is awesome. The rhema is life changing, but the logos is good as well because you need the written word. You need to be able to see it. You need to be able to read it. You need to be able to uh, uh, meditate on it. You need to be able to look up things concerning it. So, amen. Praise God. We're going to get ready to go, you guys. And I just want to tell you, I'm growing in love. I am growing in love. But in the midst of me growing in love, I do love. I love you guys. I love all the prayers. I love all of the encouraging words. Um, I love words that challenge me as well. I love words that cause me to have to pray or seek out um, uh, somebody to pray for me. Because, you know... I'm going to tell this story real quick. Well, I'm not going to tell the whole story. I'm just going to say it like this. You got to have a catfish in the barrel. A, the catfish is the fish that they use to transport fish from the, from the south to the north. So when those fish arrived, they were still strong and good and healthy. Because what was happening is that they would put those fish and transport them to the north. And by the time they got there, they were soggy and sloggy. I don't think that's a word, but I just made it up. But the fish were not, it just was not good. And so they figured it out. You know, the natural predator of these particular fish is the catfish. So they put catfish in the barrel with the regular fish so that that catfish would chase those fish constantly. Constantly chasing them while they was making that journey. So when they arrived, they could scoop that catfish out and those fish was good. The meat was good. So, you know, in life, you got to have a catfish. You got to have a catfish. Now, if you got more catfish than you do regular fish, that's a real problem. That just simply means that you might be doing something to bring people into your life that's not right. But if you got one catfish or maybe two catfish, it's all good. 
It's all good. Tell the Lord, thank you for the catfish. Now, in another language, that would oper that would be someone that's operating in a um, uh, the the spirit of the enemy. But amen. For now, I'm just calling them the catfish. All right, I did I did read a lot of the um, messages, and I know Apostle, you wanted me to deal with a certain uh, 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 area, but I could only go in the direction I sensed that the Lord was um, leading me. But you know what? You and I will chop it up. We'll chop it up. You keep that in your heart, and when we talk. On the phone, you could tell me what you were seeing or what you were sensing, but we're going to chop it up. Amen. So, guys, I love you. God bless you. Let me say a quick prayer as you go on and say a word of prophecy. Uh, no, I, I, it just, I'll just speak to you. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word today. And now, Lord, we walk away know, knowing and understanding that everything that you have for us, we receive it at the moment that we believe. It is at the moment that we believe that we receive it. The manifestation of it, we just keep walking until it manifests itself because there's an appointed time for everything. But, Lord, what we understand it now is that believing in you, having faith in you, trusting in you, relying upon you, being fully persuaded about you is one of the most important of things that you want from us. A lot of times people think, well, just obey God, obey God, obey God. Well, Lord, you said to believe you first. You can't obey if you don't believe. So, Lord, we believe you. But if there's any error in our life where we don't believe, Father, help our unbelief. Help us to believe according to your word, the way that you want us to believe and not what we think or how we thinking that we believe. So, Lord, bless us in that area. And we thank you right now. I speak to your people right now, Lord, that can hear me. And I declare, as of today, when you make up in your, if you have made up in your mind, I believe God. I believe God. And I'm not I don't know what you're believing him for. But you've been going round and round, back and forth. One day you believe, one day you're whining. One day you believe, one day you're complaining. One day you're believing and you're just going on and on and on. But I will tell you this right here. If you make up your mind right now, as of this moment, I believe God. And be done with it. Be done with it. I'm gonna say this if you believe in God for a car. You believe in him for a car. Yes, that's a natural, tangible thing. And sometimes you need a car. So if you believe in God for a car, you just say this right here. Father, I believe you. I believe that you're going to give me a car. But until that car is manifested, I'm going to keep doing what I got to do to get to where I need to go. But I'm going to do it joyfully because I believe you. I believe that you're going to give me a car. If you ask God for a car that you didn't, so you didn't have high payments or no payment at all, I've seen it done. You say, God, I believe you. I believe that you're going to do this, Lord. I believe you. And he said, at the moment that you believe, that's when the car that's when you receive the car. Not when the thing manifests itself. Because it's hard to give God glory once you get it and you've been going through hell and high waters trying to believe him. No. Make up your mind tonight. I believe God. I believe God. I have faith in God. It's 730. I love you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Um, peace to everybody. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye. My brothers and my sisters, the moment I believe that Jesus died for me is the moment that I was transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. The moment I believe I was seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. The moment I believe You are listening to For A More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God.